Hey everybody, it's Glenn back in this video with the Star Wars The Force Awakens Black Series Finn. You'll notice on the package in there, Jakku in brackets after his name. I'm assuming that means down the road perhaps we'll get another version. Him and his Stormtrooper armor with a removable helmet would be cool. Looking at the package in back and his bio reads, a trained warrior desperate to escape his past, Finn is plunged into adventure as his conscience drives him down a heroic but dangerous path. Here he is out of packaging and I'm glad along with the Black Series Ray I recently reviewed that I waited until I saw the movie to review them. Back in September when this wave hit I was like so what? Yet now my affection for the character or more specifically the actor's performance is breathing new life into this piece of plastic. From the feet up we see the signs of the character having traipsed to cross the sands of Jakku but beyond that it's not the most flashy character design. Nor does it scream Star Wars which might explain the peg warming. But hey, if you're venturing to a con and want a cosplay that doesn't get fingers pointing at you on the bus or train as you travel there, then this is it. The black and beige of the costume don't exactly excite the eye, but now the movie's out and we get a sense of the character as a living, breathing person, perhaps that'll help shift some of his action figures, which have until now clogged the pegs. Actually, the more I look at him, the more the proportions seem a bit off, like he's a bit too stocky and wide at the hips. Now as we take an even closer look, and in my opinion the Black Series suffers terribly from what I'm coining the Shroud of Turin Syndrome, in that all the head sculpts just seem to give off a vague impression of a dead face. And while here in the face sculpt we do get a degree of that expressionless morbidity, however the likeness itself I think is pretty good. It's certainly better than most of what we see in the Black series, and head and shoulders above the likeness of the Ray figure that I recently reviewed. For an accessory I would have loved him to have come with a lightsaber as he memorably wields it in the movie, and that's not a spoiler as he's holding it on every poster from months back. Instead we get this blaster, a lot less exciting to me, but it's serviceable, it's got a detailed sculpt accentuated by a wash which also lends a worn look to it. Now both of his hands are sculpted with a grip to hold the blaster, yet it's only his right hand which has the trigger finger that fits snugly into the trigger guard of the blaster. When it comes to posing him with a blaster, I do really wish the Black Series would add double jointed elbows to their action figures, it would make such a difference to the posability. But let's talk less about the articulation he doesn't have and that which he does have. So the head rotates side to side, then he has a neck hinge which moves the head down this much and then moves up but it is inhibited by the collar of the jacket there. At the shoulder his arm rotates and then hinges up to about a right angle to his body, there's rotation at the elbow and then this hinges to slightly less than a right angle to the upper arm, which is where I was saying a double jointed elbow would come in handy, there's rotation at the wrist, then the wrist hinges differ because on his left hand here it's hinged on the inside and outside of the wrist, whereas his right hand also rotates yet is hinged at the top and bottom so he can better take aim with the blaster I guess. In lieu of of waist rotation he rotates at a diaphragm joint which moves very slightly forward and then I'm not sure that's moving back at all actually. At the hips his legs move out to the side, well not very far really, they move much further forward and only really slightly back, there's upper leg rotation followed by a double jointed knee, then at the ankle his feet are hinged moving backwards and forwards, then they have that ankle rocker pivot that I love. Yet with the limited hip articulation he's not able to take full advantage of those ankle rocker pivots with this being his widest stance possible still with both feet flat on the floor. Comparing the fin figure to Ray to see which is best and I'm not sure really it's a case of pick your poison as both do have their shortcomings. So it may come down to which character you like best which for me was Ray. I did really like Finn too but I felt like some of the Marvel studio style wisecracks he had to deliver felt like an actor delivering lines and not a character living the reality of the movie. But Panty Padme and Jar Jar Binks they ain't, and I think the biggest triumph of The Force Awakens is that it introduces into the Star Wars saga two new characters that we really care about. Feel free to pipe up with your opinions in the comments below, but please for the benefit of those who have yet to see the movie keep it spoiler free. And for more of Hasbro's Black series and The Force Awakens click this video to check out my review of the First Order Riot Control Stormtrooper and Poe Dameron 2-pack. And I hope to see you in my next video. Mm, bye.